Thank you. Uh, I want to thank the organizer for inviting me. Uh, I'm not sure what target practice. Okay. You speak either from here or from the podium. Uh, it's fine if it works. Does it work? Yeah. I'm not sure what target pra uh, uh, essay is supposed to mean. Uh, I feel like somewhere I have a big target sign on myself and people are going to take part shot. But anyway, I'm, tr I'm supposed to be trained for that, so that's fine too. <laughs> uh, my topic, uh, uh, my paper is available uh, uh, on the website, so I'm not going to really launch into uh, an elaborate discussion, but I'm going to try to summarize uh, uh, my topic, which I think is already quite ambitious, though it's by far not as ambitious as some of the remarks which uh, uh, Owen has made. I'm, I have no claim of solving uh, uh, deeper metaphysical problems, but just to explore, and just is, is obviously in comma, just to explore uh, the, na the notion of intentionality. Now I say just in comma because this is obviously a huge can of worm, and in this room there are a lot of people who are much more competent than I am to talk about this issue. So I am going to limit myself uh, uh, use a little defensive strategy, but I think it's appropriate, and talk about uh, what I know a little bit about, which is how Buddhist, some uh, Buddhist thinkers have dealt with this topic, and particularly uh, 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 Dharma Kirti, about whom we have already spoken. Uh, now, the starting point of this, uh, uh, of this uh, 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 enterprise may, uh, may be this uh, famous quote from Brentano, which is, uh, goes, every mental phenomenon is characterized by what the scholastic of the Middle Age called the intentional inexistence of an object in what we could call, although not entirely in unambiguous terms, a reference to content, a direction upon an object by which we understand the reality in this case, or an imminent objectivity. Now, this is a mouthful and there are people in this room who are experts on uh, the kind of tradition which have dealt with this uh, question. But it is important to remember that the term intentionality is a Western term. I do not know of any uh, Buddhist term which would directly translate, uh, and Gary and Stephen will correct me, if uh, would directly translate the notion of intentionality. So what I'm doing here is a little bit of what my friend Jay called fusion philosophy which is uh, 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 trying to establish a dialogue uh, between uh, 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 Indian philosophy, or Buddhist philosophy in this case, and uh, some of the similar discussion in uh, the Western tradition. Now, my paper, as I say, uh, starts uh, focus on Dharmakirti, uh, who is, by the way, not 7th century BCE, but 7th century CE, so let's make this clear. Uh, so his, his uh, uh, view of the mind is in many ways very typical of the Buddhist Abhidharmic tradition, that is the mind for uh, the Abhidharma is made of a stream of moments of awareness, a stream of mental events. And Dharmakirti is far, uh, has the same view. Now, one uh, 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 particular characteristic or uh, one of aspect of that take on the mind is that the mind is understood from a first person perspective. And uh, uh, in that I think uh, the Buddhist tradition is not very different from some of the Western thinkers who have been already mentioned here, such as James Susel and so on. Now, what uh, uh, Dharma Kirti contribute to this, uh, this Buddhist discussion of, uh, of uh, uh, the mind is an epistemological reflection on uh, 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 the, the nature of the cognitive events which are part, uh, uh, which constitute the mental stream of uh, uh, sentient beings. Now, the key element in Dharma Kitty's uh, uh, theory is the uh, term akara, which I translate as aspect, uh, which is basically a kind of representation. Uh, but the idea is that. Uh, we do not uh, uh, perceive directly the world, but we take the world, we uh, perceive the world by uh, through representation which are generated in our mind in, through the contact uh, uh, with, the, with the sense and uh, the external object. So this is a kind of, uh, 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 it is in a way a representationalist view uh, of the mind. Now, 
we could have here a very kind of simplistic view of representation and take representation as something which comes from the outside world which is uh, generated in our mind and then interpreted by our thoughts and I think there is some elements in maybe Locke and some of the other British empiricists which lead to this kind of view. I have argued in my paper that the Buddhist view is actually uh, more complex and I would say more sophisticated uh, 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 than that, at least that's my uh, judgment, obviously. Now, uh, the, the problem with this view of, let's say, representation as a kind of copy uh, image of the external world is that it assumes that when we have uh, impressions of the external world, uh, well, that we have impression of the external world uh, and that we take in this uh, in, uh, impression uh, uh, and just interpret it or think about it. The problem, obviously, is that it's hard to understand uh, how these images, uh, these impressions that we have, uh, constitute in and of themselves uh, knowledge. And Dharma Kenti is very clear and quite sophisticated about that. Uh, because he understands that uh, uh, for him there is a very basic difference which is to be made in which how the mind operates. Uh, the mind, one part of the mind, perceptions, operate what, he called, what we could call uh, directly or without the med mediation of uh, language and concepts uh, and takes the object uh, as it is. There is another part of the, the mind, the conceptualization, which uh, uh, deals with the uh, external objects indirectly uh, and interpret them. Now, we could think when we hear that, that Dharmakirti's view of representation, of, uh, of the mind, of representation is a kind of classical empiricist view, but it's not, because for Dharmakirti, Dharmakirti is quite aware that, like Sellers, for example, that impressions are not forms of knowledge that when we are hit over the head, uh, that contact with the external world is not a form of knowledge, but that it will become a form of knowledge only when it is integrated with our, within our conceptual schemes. For Dharmakirti, the discussion is couched in terms of uh, pramana, which I translate uh, uh, and I apologize to the Sanskrit in, in advance as valid cognition. Uh, actually, literally, it, mean, it mean, means of valid cognition, but for the sake of simplicity and the Buddh understand more the Buddhist view, I'm going to call it valid cognition. For Dharmakirti, valid cognition implies the ability uh, of that cognition to lead sentient beings to successful actions. Uh, and therefore, for a perception to lead to a successful action, we cannot just see a patch which happens to be blue, but we need to see that patch as being blue. And therefore, uh, 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 knowledge for Dharmakirti uh, clearly involves uh, not just uh, a kind of bare taking in of external reality, but involves a process of, uh, 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 of uh, uh, interpretation. And so, for Dharmakirti, and in my paper I lay down uh, uh, the way in, in which this is in, the, in some way problematic for Dharmakirti, but I think it's a, it's a, I would uh, argue that this is a valid insight. Uh, knowledge, particularly knowledge about the external world, cannot be reduced just to our being impacted by external object and generating a likeliness of the external object, but involve a kind of cooperation between uh, uh, perception and conception. And that, I think, is uh, uh, in a way the main point that Dharmakirti wants to make. And I take, him to, I take this point to be roughly similar to what Sellers uh, uh, said a few decades ago. Now, I think in, in the, uh, uh, as I said, uh, for Dharmakirti, his main purpose uh, uh, is to present a, a, an epistemology. And so for Dharmakirti, uh, uh, the, the articulation of the fact, that of the different contribution of perception and conception is in a way uh, what he's mostly interested in. I think, however, there is a, 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 a question of what is the contribution of perception in more precise terms to this cognitive process. 
Uh, this is a question, by the way, that I often have when I read Sellers, because Sellers talk about impression, and he's very keen to argue that these impressions are not knowledge. And, as a, a, and I think I agree with that, but I am interested to think, to see whether there are ways of thinking about the contribution of perception uh, to the cognitive process over, about, over and above saying that this just uh, 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 leads to interpretation. Now, Dawah main main way of dealing with this problem is to argue that uh, uh, perception induces or causes uh, conceptualization, and that's certainly the most important role of uh, uh, perception. There is, however, tantalizing suggestion that uh, uh, there may be some ways to talk about uh, the input of perception uh, 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 which go over and above uh, uh, this strict causal role. And this is where I talk uh, about a, a, a more extended sense of intentionality. That is intentionality, that is the uh, uh, ability of the mind to be above, about something, to be directed to an object. That ability for Dharmakirti, in the full sense of the word, clearly involves uh, the cooperation of perception and conceptu conceptualization. There is no full-blown intentionality in Dharmakirti unless conceptualization is introduced. But there may be a kind of weaker or, or a more extended sense of, uh, uh, concept of intentionality, and this is what I call phenomenal intentionality. And I have really, I am, uh, uh, I, I am using a term which I don't really quite understand myself, but I am uh, suggesting there is something here interesting that may be explored. Dharmakirti, does, uh, Dharmakirti, by the way, is mostly a philosopher. A problem often in this kind of uh, uh, dialogue is that we, and, and Owen has rightly talked about that, is that we tend to overgeneralize and talk about the Buddhist and the scientist as if this were uh, kind of coherent positions. Uh, Dharmakirti is uh, first and foremost a, a, a philosopher, an epistemologist, and uh, his main concern is therefore to do epistemology. Is not uh, uh, Dharmakirti, whether he meditated himself or not, we will probably never know, but he's not uh, uh, well known for, uh, his, uh, for his contribution to the theory of meditation. So, nevertheless, uh, he does mention in some part of his work that uh, uh, he, 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 he evokes something which is a kind of phenomenal, uh, uh, phenomenological reduction, which is something like in some kind of meditative state, uh, you, you kind of don't close your mind to the sensory input, but let just the sensory input impact your mind, and, and you remain in that state. And in that state, you obviously don't have conceptualization, and conceptualization arise when you get out of that state. Nevertheless, it appears from Dharmakirti's suggestion uh, that there is some kind of uh, it, 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 perception is seeing something in some weak sense of the word seeing. Now, I'm suggesting that uh, this may be actually an interesting uh, uh, point for further research. That is, uh, my understanding of this kind of dialogue is, uh, is a pretty much a pragmatic understanding, that is that we're proceeding here under the assumption that uh, the mind can be studied in various ways and that basically a first and a third person, first and third person approach it should be combined. Now, I, I think contrary to Owen, that there are a lot of people, they may be in this room or not, but who would disagree with that if you're an eliminativist. You clearly do not agree with that. So we're already talking about a, a kind of a, a limited segment of, a, of the neuros cognitivist uh, uh, community, but that's my understanding. Now, that uh, 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 understanding obviously uh, uh, involved that there is a kind of collaboration between both sides, and that Buddhists are able to provide uh, interesting first-person accounts of meditative experience. But, and this is, um, this is where you, you you're going to be maybe shocked and surprised. If you look at the <laughs> traditional Buddhist literature, there are almost no first-hand accounts of that. And so you may say, well, why are you guys here? I mean, we thought you were bringing the data. And in fact, if you look at your literature, there is practically no first-hand account of uh, uh, meditative experience. There are, here, there are few, but uh, they are very, very fragmentary. 
So I think here there is an interesting research project, which is uh, uh, like Alan is, uh, is setting up a, a research uh, uh, meditation and research, and it would be interesting to, to kind of have people uh, produce first-hand accounts of various experiences, and probably most of it would be completely irrelevant, but there might be interesting things uh, we could discover in this process. So this is a, 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 a one reflection that I have. Do I have a little more time, or do I have to... Uh, you have another, you have another five minutes. Five minutes, okay. And I don't have much more to say, so that's perfect. Now, so this is one point I wanted to make. Another point, I think, is that uh, the uh, picture that I, uh, uh, that I gave of Dharma Kitty's approach and uh, the way it could be extended and used and so on, I think is going to be able to account for certain aspects of uh, uh, Buddhist for certain, uh, a kind of a part of the territory that uh, Buddhist uh, Abhidharma or Buddhist psychology uh, covers, and, and a large part, but it's not uh, necessarily go going to cover uh, everything, because there is in the Buddhist tradition the idea that a kind of distinction between what you could call operative state of consciousness, which engage with the world, it might be perception or conception, and then a much, uh, a much more basic subliminal uh, uh, state of consciousness, which is called uh, by various way uh, in the yoga chara tradition, about which uh, my friend Bill is an expert. Uh, it's called Ilai Vijnana, the store consciousness. But that uh, idea exists in many Buddhist traditions. Not all, not all important to, under to understand, but, but in many Buddhist traditions. And, and I think uh, 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 the, 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 this notion obviously in some way plays an important doctrinal role, and so we should not assume necessarily that it is based on experience, but I think it is going to uh, uh, involve an interesting uh, domain of the mind, uh, and a domain which is not well understood if we take intentionality to mean uh, uh, conceptual intention or con epistemic con con intentionality as well as phenomenal intentionality. Uh, and, and as I say in my paper, Dharma Kitty uh, does not cover this topic because his interest is different. But I think if we, uh, if within the framework of a, a conference like this, if we think about intentionality, it is important to include this kind of mental state in uh, the discussion of, uh, of intentionality. Now, uh, we could clearly say that this mental, st uh, this mental, st yeah, we could clearly say, sorry, that this mental state are not intentional. Uh, at that point, we would be faced with the, 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 the task of, explain, of explaining in which sense they are mental, uh, and that's an interesting discussion. Uh, we could take another uh, 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 track here, which uh, is, was suggested to me by uh, my friend Evan, uh, uh, reading in the phenomenological tradition, and talk about still further expanding the notion of uh, intentionality and talking about a kind of operative uh, intentionality. Uh, it, it, it's an intentionality which is not clear, uh, direct, uh, object directed, but which is a kind of openness to the world, a kind of potentiality or capacity or receptivity maybe to the world uh, that uh, we have. And uh, that would be one interesting way to explore intentionality, to explore, to further extend intentionality, or maybe we will not call it intentionality and uh, call it something else, but to understand what is from the point of view of the Buddhist a deeper, uh, or in the sense of more basic level of uh, uh, consciousness. That, I think, uh, exploration would be actually quite interesting because there are a number of uh, meditation in the Buddhist tradition which are described as objectless, and uh, uh, this kind of meditations obviously uh, do not seem to be uh, falling under the rubric of intentionality, at least if we understand intentionality in the sense of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, a kind of object-directed uh, uh, intentionality. So I think that kind of uh, uh, exploration I is going to be useful actually uh, uh, to the Buddhist in a sense because uh, I remember being always very puzzled by what this notion of a store consciousness is because it's described as, uh, as unclear, subliminal, but covering the whole body and so on, and it's not the, the sense of uh, touch and all that. And I think with this kind of uh, uh, dialogue with uh, Western ideas and Western neuroscientific practice, I think there is a lot to be learned 
about some of the more basic uh, uh, level of the mind for all the sites. Okay.